right, I'm gonna start by addressing an elephant in the room. Um, I am very tall, so don't invite me for your basketball team. I am terrible and I'll just embarrass all of us, so. Uh, my name is Wayne, like I said, like uh, Julia said, and uh, to tell you guys a little bit about myself. So, um, basically, I feel like these days I've become a lot of different things, hey, Carrie. <laughs> so, um, I feel like these days I've become a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, I'm a brother, I'm a husband, um, a stand-up comedian, oxygen breather, and I'm 32 years old, and I have a master's degree in computer engineering from West Virginia University. I own a marketing company based in Columbia that, it, that serves about 100 businesses a year. But in Frederick, though, for the past seven years, I've normally been known as the guy who runs the Safe Ride Foundation. And that was supposed to segue a little bit smoother, but that's fine. So to tell you guys a little bit about us, uh, we are the only nonprofit in Frederick County working to stop drunk driving. We do a number of different things, but the thing that we're known for is, uh, is this program called SOS Safe Ride. Basically what it is, it's an app that's a lot like Uber, but we drive your car home for you, right? So the kind of the way it works is, let's say you go out to the bar and you wanted to have three drinks and you had like 11, uh, basically two of us show up with, uh, with, you know, with our car and basically one of us will drive your car home, other person falls behind in our car, and when we get back to your house, we give you back the keys and leave. So, you know, we've been around for seven years. We serve the entire county. And uh, since our inception, we have now been pleased to have prevented over 16,000 DUIs here in Frederick County. So, hey, great job, great job, Frederick County, right? So today I'm gonna to take a moment, only a few minutes uh, to talk about a subject for the past few years of my life I have been very, very passionate about. I'm gonna talk about my wife. My wife is so awesome, guys. I love her so much, she's great. Uh, is she gone yet? Um, so, <laughs> so she is not the subject of today's talk, but uh, to tell you a little bit about this woman, this is gonna actually gonna help me to set the stage a little bit for this here. My wife is from the country of Slovakia, um, and she grew up most of her life uh, speaking Czech, right? I recently went there, and uh, during this entire visit there for about a month or so, uh, we got, I kept getting the same question from people. They kept asking me in Czech, hey, Wayne, like how many languages do you know? How many languages do you know, Wayne? Do you know any other languages? And my answer to them would always be the same answer that I would give to someone in English, which is takmeriaden, which means uh, almost one, <laughs> right? But I can tell you how to get to the bathroom in Czech, so there's that at least, so. I want you to consider that there are 7,000 languages almost that are spoken on this planet every single day from little towns to large cities. But there are things that are universally understood across all languages, like math, for example, right? Like for example, if I have one apple and then you give me an apple, I now have two apples, right? So that is uh, something that's, that is understood universally without fail. But one language that is not universally understood is the language of cybersecurity, being safe on the internet, and the role that it plays every single day in all of our lives. So let me tell you guys a story. So five months ago, random Wednesday in March, I was sitting in my bed, scrolling my phone as we do, and I got a notification on my phone from Facebook that looked like this, right? So that's weird, right? I'm like, okay, didn't change the passwords, what's going on there? But things got a little weirder a couple minutes later because um, a couple seconds later, I got this. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> right? So I went to log on, and what do you know, something was going on, right? Maybe it was a glitch, maybe someone was trying to get in my account, but I didn't know immediately, so of course I went to go change my password. I was very, very lucky, I cannot stress this enough, I was very, very lucky that I was holding my phone while this was happening because this could have potentially been a lot worse, but maybe I'm being overly optimistic with this statement because within two minutes, this happened. It took all of 100 seconds for a hacker from Vietnam to get into my account with two-factor authentication on, change my password, change the language of my Facebook to Vietnamese, change my name, change my profile picture and my COVID photo, delete all of my photos and my entire friends list, right? Yeah, that sucks. But wait, we're not done. Because anyone here own a business, <laughs> right, that does Facebook ads? Well, no worries. Uh, for those of you that don't, that don't know or don't realize this, your Facebook ads account is also connected to your personal Facebook, Facebook account, which means that this hacker also did all this stuff. They got into my business manager, made themselves the admin and the owner of not only my personal Facebook account, but also the ad account of SOS Safe Rides, the ad account of my marketing company, and all 40 of our current clients at the time, right? They also made themselves the admin, which means that they removed me as the admin, which means that I didn't have permission to edit or remove any of the payment op options for any of these accounts. 
And then the big holy grail is that they use that opportunity to then create bogus ads from each of those accounts that had a budget of $3,000 a day, right? So yeah, I don't know why I was being optimistic about this. This actually really sucked. <laughs> so, and yeah, it did suck. And as I told you, absolutely everything I just listed off happened in the space of two minutes, right? Very scary. So how does this happen? Well, computers are getting very smart these days, as you guys know. And as I said, I'm a computer engineer. I build apps, I build websites, on, I manage online ads, and I even, you know, and even I wasn't safe, I guess I should, you should say. But anyone here know what the ChatGPT is? Of course, right? It's the flavor of the month, if you will, right? Everyone knows it for all the sexy things it can do, right? ChatGPT, write me a song about washing machines of the South Tupac, right? <laughs> you know? ChatGPT, make me a picture of Donald Trump running from the cops after his indictment. And then ChatGPT is like, which one? Right? So <laughs> you could use it for all kinds of things like, you know, ad copy, movie scripts, etc. But you can also use it like this. ChatGPT, write me a program in JavaScript that will crack someone's Instagram password on, based on things they show interest in after examining their post. Um, oh, also change their language and admin rights so that they can't stop me for what I'm going to do next. And hurry up with it. I only got two minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's easier than ever for, you know, for, ever, for AI, I guess you, you could call it, to create some amazing things. And trust me, just like anything else on the internet, for every 100 people that use it for good, there's at least one guy who has other intentions, right? So the question now is, how did I get it back? Um, it wasn't easy, guys. I'll be completely honest with you. I don't know if you guys have ever had your Facebook or Instagram hacked by a show of hands, anybody? No? Okay. And talking to Instagram or, or sorry, Facebook or Meta support, it's a nightmare, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Forget about it. You know. Um, if, you ever, if you guys have got a chance, have got a chance to talk to him or haven't, uh, you should know that talking to Meta support will kind of make you want to fight Mike, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I am Team Elon, so yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, getting my accounts back started a two-month process um, of you know undoing the damage that was done in only two minutes, right? So I had to talk to seven different account wet reps through Facebook, only through email, by the way. So that was all the threads. There's actually more, but that's all that could fill on the screen. Um, I had to submit all kinds of documentation about myself, about my business, my clients' businesses, because again, 40 clients, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, they were ecstatic about this, by the way. <laughs> they, they were so happy, right? I had to cancel all my credit cards and have my clients cancel all their credit cards. I had to fight with the banks, <laughs> right? And then and a laundry list of other things that I would go into, but I only have 30 minutes up here. <laughs> so, however, this was probably the defining moment of the entire process. At one point during this process, about a month in or so, I actually managed to get someone on Facebook on the phone, which again, if you dealt with them, you know that's that's not happening, right? And this happened at I'm not kidding, three in the morning, right? So by this point, we're a month in and I have admin, I have admin access back. Like I I'm the admin again but the hacker is still the owner of the account at this point, right? So this is like where we are in the process. So Facebook knows that I'm hacked. Like they believe that and we've established that. So this rep and I are talking and I go, okay, so I'm the admin, right? And he's like, yes, but you are not the owner. So I can't remove any of the phony ads just yet. So I said, okay, wait, so the hacker still has access. I don't see that on my end. So like maybe you have it wrong. Like what's, what name does it show as the admin right now? And, um, I swear to God, this dude, literally, if, if he were standing across, he would look me dead in the eye and actually said this to me. He says, yes, sir, there is indeed an admin, another admin, but you're going to hate me for saying this. But per our policy, oops, my bad, <laughs> he says, per our policy, to protect the, pri the privacy of the hacker, I cannot tell you who they are. <laughs> it's my privacy, right? Like, <laughs> Are we joking, right? Oh my lord. So, dude, I wanted to throw my, my phone out the window right then and there, right? So, <laughs> so, but I calmed down, right? Kept the level head because eventually, after two months, um, I finally got everything back, all the money refunded, and everything's fine now. So, yay, great. It's, <laughs> that's awesome, right? Now, so I guess the question now is like, where do we go from here? And uh, how would I protect myself differently going into it? Now, to be honest, as a computer engineer, I thought I was doing everything right myself, you know, and because what I'm about to share with you, I already did a version of all these things, right? 
But like I said, these days, you know, we all have to kind of step our game up, so to speak. So here's what I did as a tech guy to set my game up and what you and the average computer user can also do to make sure you're protecting yourself properly, right? So starting off, here's a list. So first thing is uh, unique passwords across all your accounts. So here's the thing people don't realize. Here's the easiest way that hackers get your information these days. They don't even have to use AI for what I'm about to tell you. They send you an e maybe an email from like Facebook at gmail.com, right? Some bogus email. You don't realize it because it looks just like a Facebook email and you don't look at it, right? And then, uh, or they have like an ad on, a, on a, you know, a website that you already go to. They have an ad on that website. It goes to some bogus page and then you, and they say, okay, cool. Uh, to see whatever this is, log in with your Facebook password. They log in, right? And obviously it doesn't go anywhere, but from that point, what they do is they take that email and password combination and then they use it on every site on the internet, right? Until they strike gold. That's like the easiest way to get to hack someone's account. So basically what I'm trying to say here is it's in your best interest to make it so that whenever you're you know, making passwords that you never use the same password for you know, two different accounts, right? I know that's obvious, but what I'm saying is that most people say that and they don't do it, right? So now, next thing is a password vault, right? So hold all these passwords. You've probably heard of these, but you probably, you know, but if you haven't heard, you should hear this, right? There are programs out there that will essentially hold and encrypt all of your passwords. You have a special master password that you use to get into the vault. And then whenever you log into something, it just allows with one click to basically, you know, enter the password for you, right? Now, this helps you protect you. This helps to protect you from the people that log your keystrokes, you know what I mean? There are like hackers out there that just basically see what do you type and then they see if there's a password and they go from there, right? So this helps you to protect, protect you from there. Um, most of these programs are free. Um, I personally use NordPass, uh, which is probably one of the most trusted and it's literally a dollar a month. And don't worry, none of this is sponsored, so don't worry. I do have a promo code though if you want to. <laughs> so like and subscribe, you know how that is, right? <laughs> All right. So we have unique passwords, meaning each password is different. We have a password vault that makes it so that each password um, is easy to access and is different without having to you know, remember them. And the third thing is ridiculously strong passwords, right? Now, I mentioned NordPass, right? One of the things that it also does in there is it has a password generator, and, uh, which makes it so you can easily create super, super ridiculous passwords uh, for each of your accounts and keep them as safe as possible. So really quick, I'm gonna show you guys this. So basically, um, if you have four, char four characters in your password and only letters, uh, AI can, ha can hack your password within seconds, right? Uh, but if you have 18 characters, <laughs> it will take you 60 quadrillion years <laughs> for, <laughs> over they get. So having said that, it is in your best interest to make sure that like, all your passwords are crazy, right? So to put it simply, uh, this program makes it so that each of your passwords are you know, that ridiculous. I'll be honest, because of this program, I don't know any of my passwords, right? <laughs> But I have the peace of mind knowing that they're all secure because I don't have to remember them, right? So, so there's that, and then the last one, and this is the biggest one that we should all be using, which is, of course, two-factor authentication, right? Making it so they can't get into your account using only your password, right? So I'm assuming everybody knows what two-factor authentication is, right? Uh, quick qu quick uh, quiz, I guess you could put, is anyone know the answers to this riddle? If you do, keep it to yourself, but show your hands if you, if you do. All right, see, my man knows, right? So, okay, well, this could, uh, this could be, so basically I'll just you know, show it to you. First one is something you know, right? Now this could be something like a, a security question, which uh, could be something that only you should know, right? I always tell a joke when I'm doing stand-up, which is if I'm on a date and a girl says something like, hey, Wayne, so um, what was the name of your first pet? I'd be like, well, when you try to reset my password, right? <laughs> gonna have to lock you out for 24 hours, right? <laughs> so, but that's something you know. So security questions, things like that, and obviously your password. Second thing, something you have, right? That is something like your phone, for example. So if you have Google Authenticator, or if, say you have like a website that sends you a text message that says, this is your unique code to log in, right? Something you have. Right? And then the last one, can anyone guess it? Not you. <laughs> Uh, is it, is anyone, uh, have a, like, anyone guess which one this is? If you had to guess. No? Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> the something, la you like. something you like. Okay, that's, good. that's a good guess. Something you are, right? So that's something like your fingerprint, right? This is the most secure one by, by far because it's something that is very unique to you, right? 
So it could be you know, something like your face ID, your, your fingerprint, and anything that is just DNA related, basically. So, the, so basically, that's, it. that's how it is. That's, uh, that's, those are the three things. Something you know, something you have, something you are, and those are the three pillars of two-factor authentication. So to wrap it up, let's review, and then we'll do some questions. So the holy grail, get yourself a password manager like LastPass, 1Password, or NordPass. And with that password manager, make sure that each of your passwords is ridiculously strong and that you have a different one for every single one of your accounts. And then finally, for every single account, the big ones like your email, your banks, your social media accounts, um, make sure that each account has a different password so that you only, so that they get into one account. That's all as far as they can go, right? So in conclusion, as far as the 7,000 languages on earth, maybe today you can live he leave here knowing that you know at least two, right? So <laughs> thank you guys very much. That's it. Oh, questions, by the way? <laughs> I, shit, that's a great question. All right. So, um, yeah, we'll do a, we'll a Q&A session, right? So to answer your question, so I was going back and forth with them, forth with them for a while, and they have, like, uh, how I put it. So with the emails that I showed you guys, so at some point um, they said, hey, go to the, like, support page, right, where they have the actual chat. And then I guess on this particular chat, they said, hey, do you mind if we call you? I was like, really? <laughs> Again, it was 3 a.m. I was like, yeah, sure. And then they said, well, what time is good for you? I'm like, now? <laughs> that's, that's how I got them on the phone. So it wasn't like I scheduled it and then they, you know, it, it, that was completely happenstance, I guess. So. so be overly complicated with your chat session and that was why it's no longer working as a chat. Seems like it. <laughs> that's good. That's one way to put it, I guess. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, you know, you brought up something interesting, um, which is when it comes to the different reps that you have, like, I mean, this wasn't the person I was talking to over email. So I literally had to go through seven people because you have to like cut bait if the person is incompetent. I hate to put it that way, but it's true. So basically I had to talk to seven different people before someone understood what was happening. Because, you know, like I said, they took my account, SafeRides account, the marketing companies and all of our um, clients. So it was very complicated what happened to me. And the person's just like, oh, uh, you know, okay, we got your SafeRide account back. I'm like, okay, what about the other 38? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like. Well, and then when you got them on the phone, the last thing you told us was that he said he couldn't divulge the name of the hacker. Uh -huh. Sure. So basically, it was just us going back and forth until they until they eventually did it. Like I wish I knew what exactly what they did, but as far as like you know the back and forth, it was really just uh, me staying on their asses. I'd be completely honest with you, until they eventually like did exactly what I wanted them to do. I mean, like I said, because it's so complicated, there were so many parts where they thought they were done and they tried to close the ticket. I'm like, no, go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, just that's my point is that like the biggest thing is just staying on top of them because they're going to they're going to try and get you off the phone so to speak so yeah. I am um, with if you go back like if you look at the where you can store all of your passwords. Mm -hmm. I know, but you know we've been told for years that those programs exist. My fear is that those programs will get get hacked, hacked right? And then they will have all of the unique passwords. I hear you. Right? So here is. Sure, I got you. So basically when you think about encryption, right? Um, now here's the thing, there are, are programs that have been hacked, I will tell you that. However, the, um, the ones that are good, like some of the ones I mentioned, but the exception of LastPass to, to an extent, um, if some, the, the server that it is on, right, is encrypted. So having this, I'm being very simplistic here, but just hear me out. So if someone were to hack their server, then everything that's in that server it cannot be seen by the hacker, right? So then basically when they, they can't see your information, but they can basically, they got, to the, they got to the big cheese, but then they can't see all the little things if it makes any sense, right? So like the only way that say, someone would be able to get into your password vault is if say they have your master password and then you're something you're, you are. So they have to cut your finger off and then also get your master password. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's what you, okay. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, I mean, you know, I'll be completely honest with you here, you know, when it comes to, to cybersecurity, one of the reasons why it's such a big industry is because there's always a vulnerability, you know? Like, I mean, I wish there was a bulletproof, bulletproof way to do absolutely everything, but, you know, let's be completely realistic here. I'm not in the industry, so I'll just talk shit if I need to. <laughs> so, but thank you for asking. So, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. This is kind of a silly question, but because I got that same email, and I was thinking about trying to figure out what password to put in there, how do you know it's a 
Well, when uh, you saw the, <laughs> the language, right? Um, so when I, I, like I said, I had my phone in my hand, and like, like you said, I got the, got the notification. And just based on everything that had happened, I mean, they deleted all my friends, they, had, they changed my profile pictures and stuff. Oh, and so I just, the yeah, within that two minutes. I'm just thinking, are they doing that to me now and I don't know it? Like, oh, that's what you mean. Right? So you're saying that it happened recently, but you, um, but like nothing has happened yet? Does that make right. sense? Right. Interesting. Okay. Well, precaution would be just to go ahead and change it. I went immediately and changed my password because I got that. Okay. That's good. So do they have access to your computer and you don't know it type of thing? Well, uh, that's a, nice, a nice virus scan sweep might be in order, right? But, which I'm sure you have done, obviously, but you, you see what I'm saying. Like, if I was in your situation, um, especially now, considering how paranoid I am, then I would just honestly just, again, do a clean sweep of everything, honestly. So, yeah. I mean, what was the very um, first time I was, I was getting my... Forgive me, by the way. I know you guys are roasting hands, but go ahead there. Well, You're fine, yeah. <laughs> what was what was the first what was the first notification that you got that led to all of this? I think it was your first, probably your very first. Uh, you know, I need to go back to it. Oops, my bad. Um, and now it's gone. <laughs> it was the one. It was um. It just said, uh, "Did you change your password?" Oh. Right. Okay. So like, if it if it wasn't got if this was you, then don't got worry it, about it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Sure. I'm gonna add something to that. So um, another thing you can also do is when it comes to the master password or even when it comes to some of the passwords that are in the vault, let's say you have one of those crazy 18 character passwords. Um, let's say it's on your bank, that's an important one, right? So if you're like super gun shy about that type of stuff, what I do is I'll go to chase.com and I'll, and I'll click the button that puts in the password and then I'll also, I'll make it so that there is like a four digit character, so to speak, that like that only I know so like basically this is like three factor authentication almost, right? So you'll have the complicated password that's in the vault and then you know like, you know, 9964 or whatever, right? That's at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So that if they get into the password, they don't know that part. So okay. they only know the beginning of the password. Does that make sense? Okay. Sorry, I'm, forgive me if I over explained that, but yeah. So, so yeah, cool. Go ahead. When you were, when you were hacked, did huh? you use an VPN? Was I using, not at the time, no. Mm -mm. Uh, I mean, I don't personally do it. I mean, it depends what I'm, if I'm doing crypto. I'll do it, but that's about it. So, so yeah, not, not at the time though to answer your question. So, I had another question. Sure. So, did you click a link that initial to change password? Did you, was that an email? It was an email. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay.
they won't replicate exactly what those legitimate emails look like, but they are for groups, and they will put malicious code in the buttons or uh, point you to a malicious server. Mm -hmm. So you think you're clicking on the original email, mm -hmm. but it takes you to a malicious server, yep. which immediately installs. Then you're done. <laughs> Then it's up here, right? That's it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So. Another really great tip, and, and you're going to laugh. I love the idea of having an encrypted code provide that master password. But the moment I looked at my mother and said, we need to encrypt your password, she blows the alarm clock at me. <laughs> <laughs> so on my desk at work, I always have a bottle of lotion, a uh, clean a light out, whatever. So my master password is the UPC code with a word that only I know, and the second letter is <laughs> but I know that my lotion is going to be there for at least a month. If I ever forget it, it's right there. I can type it in. I know what my word is. And it's so super simple. And nobody online knows, you know, nobody online knows what they're doing. Sure. And nobody in my office knows which bottle on my desk is the one that I'm using the UPC code from. It's, it's pretty cool. I like my that. Mom <laughs> you know the drill. <laughs> going to say really quick my, my wife is the same way you know like she was there at the house while this while I'm freaking out you know what I mean <laughs> like so and you know she has a NordPass now but you know there's there's a part that's a bit of a pain in the butt which is like the process of changing all your passwords because mm -hmm. I mean I wish that the the program could just like you know you press a button and it just on your behalf does all that stuff but no you do have to go manually and do it and like well, once you do you're like you that sense of security but my wife is just like, well, I'll change it for my bank and I'll change it for my, you know, my email and that'll be it. I'm like, well, what about your, you know, your social media accounts? What about your, you know, mm -hmm. insert thing here, right? So I hear you. That's what I'm trying to say. Is it also uh, possible? Oh, oh, no, you're good. Is it also possible? Like you said, you were, you got the message, you got the message. Yeah. I am assuming here that you don't manage 40 social media accounts for different companies. Mm -hmm. I actually think mm -hmm. this is like a phishing thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they got into your account. Find yeah. interesting and, moved on to the next and one more thing too I'm glad you brought that up so with the marketing company right we probably do about like I want to say like 2.5 million in like ad spend every year so like between all the accounts put together so what I'm saying here is that if you're not a whale so to speak meaning like you're not spending at least like I don't know a million on ads or whatever Facebook doesn't care at all right and it was just like a nightmare just trying to even get again someone on the phone someone on the to take you seriously so to speak and then uh, there was another marketing company they do more about like 50 million or something like that they have their, they have their own rep you know what i mean <laughs> so it's like you know so just understand like they they they'd rather just write it off than have to deal with it so. i'm not i mean i'm saying it's it's not impossible but it took two months <laughs> so. okay Well, 
What is one of those? Can I, can I tell you something really quick? <laughs> I did too. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> and I mean, it looked very official. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And uh, so I just, I just, I mean, it doesn't look very official. And sometimes it comes through in Messenger, sometimes it's yeah. email. Mm -hmm. So I just go look and see if the account is actually still up and active. And if it is, it's like, all right, this is not real. Um, yeah. Because mm -hmm. we have made posts that have used pictures or music or whatever. Um, and, uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah. they're complete, there's a tiny bit of data. But and there's a lot of. Crappy people out there. Use someone's likeness without permission. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> If they get into your email. Like, I was gonna say, so if you if they hack your email, you know how you log into Chrome, right? If they get your Google, your Gmail, that's it. Yeah. But supposedly Yeah, I guess you're right, but it's only so much. So the other question I have for you then was um, did they get into any of your bank accounts through those luckily luckily no. So the extent of this, so you know I mentioned all of the you know, the different accounts, like the different clients and stuff like that. I was very lucky that this, that I was online when this happened because I was able to like, just get on the phone with like, or, or in Slack, whatever, with everybody. And then just tell them, cancel everything. I'm sorry, yada, yada, yada. And like, and then with my bank, what was really nice was that um, you have what's called a threshold uh, for ad spend on your account. So basically meaning that it won't charge you until either the end of the month or until you hit the threshold. So they were starting ads for like three grand a month, but they could only spend $250, right? So that, that's a good safeguard on Facebook's part um, to keep that from happening. So luckily financial damages were very, very minimal when it came to what happened to us. But yeah, that just, that's the, I guess that's the answer to your question, yeah, so. So basically, they, it got charged to the account, meaning like to the Facebook account, but I mean, again, not me personally. So it took a while for them to make the account go back to zero, but the answer is no. Yeah. By the way, really quick. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, someone, someone got hacked. Do you want to tell the story? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So actually, wasn't a specific activist um, identity talk? Mm -hmm. um, Um, I would, before I forget this, um, when Julia mentioned the thing about key logging, right? So key logging programs are really easy to use. I'll be honest with you. Um, I um, use a keylogger, or rather learn how to use one. Uh, uh, okay, so back in the day, uh, when I was 14 years old, I shit you not, uh, my brother and I used to play this, um, this online game, right? 
And at one point, he got into my, uh, my what do you call it, my account or whatever, right? And I had to use a keylogger to, like, to, get, to figure out what he typed so that I'd get it back, right? So I was 14 years old and learned how to do it. That's, so just understand how easy it is, if it makes any sense. And that's where you, you know, they track your keystrokes and stuff like that. So yeah, keep that, keep that in mind. <laughs> so, and this is the point, guys. This is, I guess, to wrap it up. You know, what I'm trying to get at here is that everyone hears about these encrypt about encryption and two-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. But what I wanted to do here was to just show you guys, like, you know, here's what happens if you don't if that doesn't happen, or rather, here's what happens if you don't have that in place. And again, key logging and things like, you know, again, why your fingerprint's important, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully this gives you a little context or can at least paint a picture of like, you know, why these things are important and how to protect yourselves. So that's all I have. So. Does anybody else have anything that was up to hand? Just got a comment for um, two-factor authentication. So we need our phones constantly all day to mm -hmm. get all those uh, um, two-factor authentication. Yeah. Which reminds me that when we travel abroad, oftentimes we're like, well, we don't want to pay for the service. Mm -hmm. We want to do a SIM card. We want something. It's like, remember that you're going to need your phone, your phone number. Oh, another thing too is if you get a new phone, I made the mistake of trading in my phone and forgetting that I had the authenticator on it, and it's like specific to the phone. So yeah, like <laughs> just make sure you switch that over, you know. So, so yeah, guys. So not to scare anybody. Hope this is like encourages everybody to like you know. Yeah, I guess step your game up if anything else. And uh, yeah. So. Well, that's what you just sure, said. Sure, go for so it. That's So what you would do is there's, okay, I'm using Google Authenticator as an example here. Uh, what you, they actually have changed it now to where it is linked to your email now, but before the way it would work and with other authenticators is they have like a unique code that basically there's a button you push that says, I'm getting a new phone. And then it says, okay, here's how you do it. Put this code on the new phone and it'll transfer everything over. In the app. In yeah, in the app itself. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, but yeah. So. So, so do you actually have an, so when you say two-factor authentication, uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, this is something I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not sure like how, in terms of the, like how much one of the more safe, because both of them are unique codes, you know what I mean? So if they're texting you like a code that you can only use one time, then that's r random, and then the authenticator is also random. So I'd imagine they're equal, but I mean, do you, can you speak to that? I'm not sure. The difference is negligible. It's negligible. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And, and and speaking, unless we're doing top secret yeah. stuff, it's, it's mm -hmm. not, that's not what we're doing. EDM was mentioned yeah. earlier. Um, so who uses some kind of like something other than Google? Do you use DuckDuckGo? Do you use a VPN? Do you use something when you're on the internet? Glenn, do you, don't you use DuckDuckGo? Mm -hmm. um, and so you use some I other things too, right? Mm -hmm. No, but you're shaking. Yeah. So what do you use? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what that is, right? Duck, duck, go. Yeah. All right, right. I'll well, just make sure. <laughs> Contacts wise. Their big thing is they don't trace, they don't trace what you do. Mm -hmm. That's the big draw to them is they don't care. They don't yeah. want a fingerprint of what you're doing. And that's why a lot of people like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Google and, uh, or some of these other VPNs are gonna, 
I'm going to point something out really quick. Just remind, uh, this wasn't part of the pre presentation, but you reminded me. So you mentioned uh, that with DuckDuckGo, one of the biggest things they don't do that they do is that they prevent uh, tracking cookies for from different websites, right? Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, with a, what a tracking cookie is, but one of the biggest cookies that's in, that people kind of neglect, I guess, is the Facebook like I'm logged in cookie, right? So a lot of times the hackers, that's one thing that they'll do is that they'll steal that cookie so that they don't need your password. Because remember I told you when I logged, when I got in, when I got hacked in the first place, they, I already had two-factor authentication already in there, right? So how'd they get in? It's because they stole the tracking cookie. <laughs> so at least that, at least that's my, that's my, you know, guess assumption. Yeah. So yeah, just think about that, I guess. <laughs> so using something like DuckDuckGo prevents, there is no Facebook tracking cookie, or what do you well, think you've done? See, that's, so my understanding is that's, that's the case, but like, but I'm, I guess like, yeah, that's another question for you, I suppose, too, because again, as much as I'm in the, 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 yeah. the I'm just sharing my stories, guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. Something about <laughs> so. else? yeah, all good. Right. Well, thanks, guys. That was fun. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'll rip, rip the suit. <laughs> it was a good discussion. Yeah, you, know I mean? you convinced oh, me to make more than five passports. <laughs> That's fair. Oh, well, we drove you.